we go through the chapter which is uh, uh, a chapter which is very nice for uh, arranging plots uh, within one uh, vi visualization this is uh, quite useful sometimes when you have just uh, the possibility to present one two or oh, just three plots so you can arrange more uh, plots inside one the main one so you can uh, provide with more visualization even if you uh, presented with just two or three plots so the the learning objectives for for this chapter are to produce several subplots uh, in uh, one visualization and then arrange uh, a range of packages for providing different approaches to arranging separate plots. Uh, this chapter focuses on uh, making more than one plot in one visualization, as I said, and uses these, uh, these packages for doing this thing, which is they are patchwork, cowplot, grid extra, and GG power. Okay. Um, I have I go through the plots and then we um, see this in practice uh, into R. So I didn't um, focus too much on the data set. I suppose to have already made a plot and I want to arrange them uh, in one visualization. So uh, the, the, the chapter uses a patchwork uh, for all the plots that he provides and, uh, and then uh, um, I have made an extra uh, um, section with um, examples from the other packages that have just been mentioned. So the first package is, uh, the first package is patchwork and this is the most common uh, used uh, within arranging plots in a one visualization because it's uh, easy, straightforward. Uh, you just use a simple um, uh, math science to arrange plot in different ways, as well as using brackets. Uh, um, and this way you can arrange them differently. The first uh, type of uh, um, arranging thing is uh, uh, arranging two plots, one uh, side by side to each other. And uh, you can do this by uh, adding a plus sign. So the plot one plus plot two, and you obtain this uh, a nice visualization. Um, as you can see, uh, this in this visualization, uh, this is very simple and you have just one legend. In case you have two legends, the, the things will be slightly different. Um, for example, if you have uh, more than two plots that you want to arrange in one uh, visualization, you can as well uh, add them uh, in sequence uh, using the plus sign. And uh, as you see, uh, the space, in case you have uh, um, the, the legend on a side, uh, it's a bit... Uh, um, so visible and the, the plot without the, 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 the legend on a side would be a, a little bit more uh, like squashed. Um, there are several options that can be added to, um, to your uh, visualization for um, uh, like um, making making it more nice, more visible, as well as those options that you use for when you make a single plot. The thing is that um, sometimes when you add um, a feature at the end with patchwork, at the end of the sequence of the, the plot, this might affect just the last of the plots. So there are several, there is a, a workaround about this with a new symbol that we'll see uh, just a bit forward. Uh, so you can establish a layout 
for your um, uh, plots, uh, saying that you want them uh, in two columns, or you might want to say n row and, uh, and fix the number of the rows as well. Um, in this way, uh, th this is the default uh, um, arrangement when you have uh, more than two plots. But you might want to have them all on a line, so you have like, just one row. Uh, and so it's it, um, straightforward doing like this. Instead, there's another option to, if you want to add them uh, in one column, and you can use uh, um, this, this, uh, this sign. Um, and patchwork will put the the, uh, the plots one uh, in the, in just one column, and then there's more compositions to use. So you have, uh, for example, uh, uh, one plot. And uh, what what is the the name? Can, can someone help me? Uh, the name of this sign? Um, it's the vertical bar. Bar. Okay, uh, the vertical bar. Yeah, uh, so you have um, you can use the vertical bar or or the plus sign, which the result the result is the same, um, and then with the brackets, uh, set um, the the um, a different layout for uh, the remaining plots. So like um, the plot two will be on top of the plot one uh, and plot four like here so you have made the plot three on a side and then all the rest uh, in the the other half of the the visualization uh, with this composition one on top and the other two side by side as you can see the the plots they squash it a bit so they mm, they, they, they do not resize uh, precisely, but they squash it. But there are some work around about these issues. Yeah. Any questions? OK. Um, one thing which uh, I didn't know about it uh, was this kind of uh, ar layout arrangement. And so, uh, this A, B, C, D are the four plots, and you can uh, um, like set a layout and then uh, call it in the within the plot layout function. And this is will be this is uh, A A B. And that means that uh, uh, the plot. The first plot takes two places, and then the other plot. Uh, while in the um, the following C uh, allows for some space, and then there's the plot B. And finally, the third uh, part, which is this one at the bottom is the plot C and two times, so it takes uh, double of the space, the plot D. This is nice, I didn't know about that. And then you have this space that you have chosen to, uh, I don't know, maybe for writing something to have. Okay, so let's go forward and see some other features that can we add to this um, composition. And we have uh, these three plots, uh, um, just w one uh, side by side with each other. Then we add a guide uh, area. And this guide area is the area where uh, automatically Patchwork will put, will position the, the legend. So we save an area of the plot for the, uh, for uh, the guide legend. Uh, as you see, uh, as well, there is uh, this option um, because we require two columns, and then 
the guides because uh, two of the plots have uh, um, a legend uh, this legend can be collected in this in this case so we can use guides and collect so we have just one legend for for the the for the visualization This is, um, in, um, in addition, there, there is another uh, possible customization of the team for one plot or uh, for both. Because as I said, if you add, for example, uh, a team um, of some kind, like light or whatever it is, uh, this might affect just the last of the plot that you have uh, put in sequence. So to avoid to a workaround of this, and this I didn't know that uh, about this as well. So that is very interesting. You uh, make a selection. So this is uh, plot one plus plot two. You assign this with a name, and then um, uh, selecting just the first plot. So this way you. It's like that you uh, take the composition, but select just the first plot and adding a team, a special team, to the first one. And so one has the customization and the other one not. Um, I've chosen the first one because it, it's... Um, by default that he modified the, the, the last one when you add a team, a new team. So if you want to change the one of the, the previous plot, you can do it like this. I don't know if you know about this option, which is nice. Then this is uh, another uh, things that I didn't know as well. The ensemble, the ensemble, um, this is uh, used to uh, set the customization for both plots. So, as I said, if you do uh, plot one plus plot four and then plus team, the, by default it affects that the, the plot four. If I'm not clear, just please interrupt me. Um, but uh, if you use the end sign, you can um, you can um, make the customization that affects both plots. So I fix, for example, the scale uh, to continuous for the variable y, and this will be affecting both plots as well as the theme of this kind, as you can see. And this is uh, the E sign that is used to, to do this thing here and here. So in the, it's a syntax that will mm, let you um, customize, customize both plots in your visual, visualization. Then uh, we can make annotations as well that mm, in a way that we uh, are able to have uh, a common uh, title for all the plots inside the, the visualization, not just uh, on a side, but it can be centered and cover the, the whole uh, plan. Uh, and you use the plus sign uh, with the plot annotation function and then you can add a title, a caption and even tag levels so that uh, this is automatically uh, so that you have like um, you, you can put numbers, letters or um, anything that uh, um, you um, think it would be usable in to identify the different plots uh, and with this option tag levels and then with the with the end sign 
you can add a theme gray, for example, with a uh, particular family, base family, for example, that will affect all the plots inside the visualization. So you can use the plus sign for adding the plot annotation and the end sign for change the theme for the, the world visualization. Uh, again, if we want to select just one of the plot within the, the, the composition, uh, then we can change um, the tag level, for example, to a new level and specify which level it is. So you have this, this is just I, and this is uh, O1, and this is 2. A with this syntax. Um, now uh, um, we want to arrange plots, but uh, we with different um, um, in different position um, in the in, in the panel. So it, it, we don't want them of the same size. So we want to like insect an element on top of, of one plot. And, and this is, it is possible. Uh, so we can nest plot into each other as well as setting the position of the, the plot that we insect into the main one. And there are general options that are used for positioning the, the inset plot, uh, which are left, right, top and bottom. But uh, you can customize it more specifically using um, the unit function, um, which uh, by default is uh, uh, NPC units. Otherwise, you can specify, for example, millimeters, or centimeters or, or different uh, like lines or points. Um, in addition, the location is by default set to panel area, but you can align to uh, the plot area. So an inset can be placed exactly, for example, if you want to specify a maximum um, or a minimum distance uh, to the top right corner, uh, uh, you can use uh, uh, the, the, um, a formulation with the unit function, establishing, for example, 15 millimeters from the top right corner. And this can be done using the insect element. You have the main plot with the insect element function. You put inside the plot that you want to put on a side because, I don't know, it's like a specification of the main plot. Uh, and then you um, have different uh, options okay, you can use for aligning to um, a side, um, some, some distance from the left, from the bottom. Um, and this is the patchwork package. One more thing from Patchwork is, uh, um, again, this is a guide collect that we have seen with the insect element, uh, as well as before, we can add a plot annotation with tag levels and for all the visualization, a theme. There are, I've made some uh, extra um, uh, things to see uh, because there are other packages that I use it for arranging plots as well. Uh, and these are nice. I'm, I'm not sure about which one is best, um, but I think personally depends by the, the things that you want to plot, that you want to represent. If you have, uh, I don't know, images, if you want, you have uh, maps. Um, so it might be useful to use uh, um, a package 
which more than other but i'm not sure about what which one is considered as a standard the best one or i don't know so another um, uh, two packages that are quite common are library grid extra and library grid uh, in this case you use the function grid range and you just list uh, the number of plots that you want to uh, represent um, say that you want two columns or you can even mention and it will arrange um, automatically by itself uh, more or less this way by default and then you can arrange it differently then there is a cow plot package and this one is the one in, uh, as well as package i use most uh, because uh, it's very stable and it maintains uh, the um, uh, the the plot as as, uh, as is. Um, so you scale the plot uh, as you like and maintain the proportions. Uh, you can use plot grid, listing the uh, the plots and then adding all the features like the labels, changing the colors of the labels. Um, for example, um, you can set the size. Um, th there's many, many things in the documentation you can find. Um, when, you, you, when you need it, you just uh, like do the question mark, plot grid, and the help uh, in the help pane. Uh, within our studio everything will come up for you to as a helpful resource for adding uh, all the other features that you need then also you can uh, uh, specify the relative width for example you want the first plot a bit more squashed than the other one um, as a hundred uh, percent proportion and this is uh, the function plot grid from cow plot then um, what i do most often <laughs> is this uh, like i save if i have an image i make a plot for example and then i want to be stable uh, and stay like that fix it i don't want anything squashed on any side and nothing so uh, I save it as an image and then with ggdraw still from uh, cowplot I uh, draw my plot which is this one the main one and then draw the image just calling by this like this you don't need any other packages like magic or gg image nothing uh, just cowplot and you uh, draw the image and then you set it where you want then you may need a bit of trial and error or using other packages with to understand what are the um uh, how the, the uh, is made because this is uh, um for example uh, no point four, no point four, and this is the position of the the plot. And then you can scale it and it rescale it proportionally to half of the um, the dimension, or bigger or smaller as you like. You can even make it longer, like changing the width or the height as well. There's other options. And then you can draw labels and write in things wherever you want. You set the, the position and do many things. This is ggdraw and the draw things function with many different options. As well as always, you do ggdraw and double columns and all the options uh, for draw uh, functions will be available for you to use. For example, uh, with uh, plot grid, okay, this this is the first one we have seen from cowplot, no? Uh, the classic one to use. Uh, for example, this is a nice trick. 
uh, you can set a title because uh, this is plot grid you have set uh, two plots inside a visualization then you want to add a common title to do this you need to use ggdraw so you use ggdraw you draw label then set the title with some options then a team for example and then you again plot the grid with the title which has this syntax and the plot um, that you have just uh, drawn now i'll put it on a side but then you can move it arrange it wherever you want again ggdraw you can draw plot uh, uh, for example, instead of using the image, you use a ggdraw and then you draw plot, draw plot 1, draw plot 2, whatever you want, um, and then draw the label. You can scale them put, mm, to have them smaller or great. The last package, then we look at the, the chat. Uh, it's uh, ggpubber ggpubber uses uh, this function which is ggarrange and as well as the other uh, you list your plots and set the, the option for the number of columns the number of rows a common legend um, as you see the, the, the common legend has not be positioned here in the white space at the bottom but the default is on top, but you can change that as well. And this is the, the end for um, the all, all we got in the in the chapter. So patchwork imaginist uh, here is the link is one of the packages mentioned it. Um, and as we have seen, there are some other packages and here I've put the um, resources for doing the same things if I go to Imaginist you can see that uh, there's quite nice um, explanation how to use patchwork the as well as the starting from the installation and everything it's quite easy because you just uh, use mathematical, uh, very simple mathematical symbols for uh, arranging your plots, as well as the other uh, resources. Uh, uh, you could yeah. pause here. That was actually, I actually had a question that I was going to ask, like about what the difference between patchwork and one of the extra, um, like the first extra one you showed, but I think it was grid arranged. So it seems like patchwork is kind of like built off of the idea of grid arrange because they seemed very similar to me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, this is grid because grid and grid extra. Okay. Let Let's go back uh, here. Uh, grid arrange uh, is from uh, grid extra and. Um, uh, grid is uh, useful for um, I, I show you uh, because this comes from uh, ggplot2 so let's say that this is the default um, that um, you have the documentation here and then uh, to use and then to add extra feature uh, patchwork uh, then uh, has been used to uh, arrange plots differently, adding features and workarounds to, to some things, but with a bit more uh, like verbose passages, you can uh, achieve the same result um, with these other packages. Uh, this is, uh, for example, Grid Arrange, the documentation uh, which I found uh, uh, very nice. And uh, as you see, you, it shows you uh, how to, uh, to make um, like a tree map. 
and uh, this is very nice um, with uh, arranging the grub using grubs uh, and grid arrange so th this is um, that would be quite nice to to go to uh, to see how uh, how can be uh, made like something such as this which is very nice yeah, thank and, you. Uh, let, let's see if there's any other things. Oh, uh, yes. Um, what are the MPC units? Um, they are like the number of points uh, that you uh, uh, want to add to to add in um, as a distance when you placing something uh, in your plot. Uh, this normalized parent coordinates, yeah, <laughs> the number of points, yeah. So um, I think it's the uh, the distance to from zero to one of the points that you uh, move the things inside the plot, and then uh, um, what else? No, not, not there is any any other questions. Maybe there's some other question. We can see, uh, for example, um, that this is the the data set that uh, has been used for making the plots and the classical one uh, for the cards. And um, so the classical plots and they just begin add to to each other. If you have any questions or any personal experience to share, maybe which one is the package that you prefer on top of the other? Which one do you use most? Maybe I haven't there is, used yeah. any of them, but patchwork is pretty impressive. I think I have to look for op opportunities to combine plots so I can try it out. And for example, for making maps, uh, there would be some, um, uh, when you make a map, mm -hmm. the map is easily uh, changing the, the proportion so that you cannot see it properly, the things. So that would be required. Uh, something that it's very stable and stayed like that. ggpub personally has given me some, some trouble sometimes. I don't know, maybe because my machine is not very uh, updated, but sometimes it's, I don't know, I, um, uh, it, it's usable sometimes when you use grid, um, grid gg arrange with ggpub. Uh, because it frame the the plot as it is, as is and then uh, you um, you may want to add annotation and things it all stays like that but I think it's very heavy sometimes it requires lots of memory or something it's mm, more uh, of this kind and then uh, what else um, Yes, this is uh, the the Imaginist. Let's go back to the Imaginist. I think it's here. Then. Okay, so um, for example, what else? Uh, uh, this, uh, you can use, for example, the, the parentheses and align three plots and then put another one at the bottom. But I personally experienced some uh, changing in proportion of some plots, not, not for any plots, but sometimes plots that just squash it to each other, you cannot see. So the, it depends by your the data you're using, depends by the, the visualization. You might try the simple one, just adding and then uh, trying some other packages. Um, so, 
something else in the chat maybe use patch and cowplot ah, okay yeah i use patch and uh, And I think it almost everything. Uh, I don't know. Um, I like the way to, uh, for example, Cowplot lets you uh, take a picture or I don't know anything that you want to add into a plot. It's a syntax that you do. Draw plot, draw image, draw label, draw text. Uh, you make a second uh, syntax like ggplot, uh, but then you can add things that stays like that, and you can rescale them as you like. For example, that, oh, that nice. I don't know what a grub is exactly. Can be any function, any things. What is a grub? The graphic object. <laughs> I was gonna say I That's I caught general. that one. Yeah. Graphic object. Kent, I've got a quick question for you. I know you d have done a lot with ggplotter or the library in general, but um, for the team as a whole, is there a preferred file format to save your plots uh, in 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 use? It's kind of a kind of a vague question because I'm I'm I know it has to do with what what media type you're trying to to get your users uh, to consume if it's post networks graphics PNG or if it's vector graphics. Um, I find that I gravitate towards vector more, uh, especially with inkjet printers in in print form. Um, you get a really crisp, clear, and it scales uh, on on the web as well. Which one? Uh, vector graphics SVG format. Ah, oh, SVG. Okay. I think PNG is a vector format too, isn't it? I I always consider that a, a raster form, uh, and the okay. it's a it's a I light. Might be wrong. Yeah, it's, no, it's a light footprint for web uh, consumption. Um, the size of the file is is fairly small. It's usually in the less than hundred kilobytes in in scale. So when you're downloading from a server, it's it's quick to to respond. At least on the web, it is. Um, but my, my real, I guess, drive question for Frederica's uh, uh, this, uh, presentation, when you're using uh, the various packages to build your graphic object, um, mm -hmm. and especially with layering, um, does anybody do any post editing after you generate from our studio uh, your, your output? If you do save the file, does anybody do post rendering at all? I try really hard to avoid that because right. I want my the results to be reproducible and often there's some tweak that has to happen to the data. Right. Um, so my my graphs tend to be less sophisticated maybe than okay. somebody who, who does do that, but um, that's fine for, for my uses. And I, I know, I think it's pretty common in journalism to bring them into Illustrator or something like that. Yeah, exactly. For, well, for the final workup, but I don't do that. Well, I was combining what, what Frederica's presenting with Michael's last week on the arrows. Uh, I don't recall what that uh, reference call was, Michael, if you want to uh, add into that statement. Uh, the annotations, the bow or the arrow that gets pointed, at, you can adjust that uh, as another object on top of the image as well. And I'm thinking if you're if you're using patchwork, it kind of you're creating an object of the image and then adding additional features uh, as you combine it on the canvas. Now, if you look at Cedric Scherer's um, publications, it's amazing what he does with just ggplot. And um, I'm not sure what he uses for the layout, calplot or patchwork, but see. he makes really beautiful plots. Um, using that are it's all from code without any post processing. They are fantastic. They're beautiful. Yeah. How does he do it? I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot of skill and probably a lot of time yeah. too. Wait, who's that? I copied right? him. I copied him a lot, <laughs> as much as possible. Cedric Scherer, you know, he came up. I think last week. I'll post one link in the chat. But he is perfect quite a few um, but that will get you to his website and he just does 
amazing, amazing work. Yeah, it's quite difficult. It's quite, quite difficult. You need to have a lot of time, practice, practice, years of experience and everything. Because um, enough that you change or mis misposition something that uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, but uh, one more thing I want to mention is the, for the maps, for example, is the team map package. I don't know if you know anything about it. So this package provides a function which is team map arrange for arranging to uh, to map to maps in a way that they do not squash it to each other. So they stay like that. Um, and then um, about the, the things that you said, Ryan, about the uh, what my what is my preferred uh, things to uh, like um, for for saving pictures or plot. Uh, I usually use PNG, uh, and uh, this Raj package most of the, almost all the time because because of my machine. GG save uh, doesn't doesn't uh, release the, um, the 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 image uh, clearly as I want uh, as I as I expected. So sometimes the the, the resolution is not very uh, fantastic in, within my machine because if I use Windows, if I use the other one, uh, I may be able to use GG um, save, and the resolution is fine. But uh, for for this, um, I have a, a captain, a chapter uh, Macintosh, so quite old. Uh, I need to make a lot of modifications to keep using it, um, like updating certifications and everything. But uh, I prefer to use this Raj uh, package with the add PNG function. Uh, I set the resolution, the width, and everything. Uh, and uh, it looks um, as is fine. Yeah, I use uh, PNG sometimes because it helps with uh, GIS shape, uh, not shape files, but spatial format files because they can also store the height or the pixel value. So sometimes I use uh, PNG for spatial data. Uh, what is it? The arrows are uh, in the chapter uh, with geom and curve, for example, annotate geom curve. Uh, I don't know what is this. That was Michael's uh, response to the ah. arrow comment I was making. Okay. Uh, for me, it's everything. Um, I, I have nothing else unless you want to share something maybe um for me um, i am it's done thank you federica it's very good thank you thank you sharing okay yeah thanks federica that was great especially at short notice That's the problem. thank you <laughs> Let's see, see right you all next week. <laughs> see you. Bye. 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 See everyone.